I had the worst time ever and I'm still currently having the worst time ever because of the worst time ever that I had at the end of my flight here. All morning, I've been trying to make travel insurance claims and stuff like that because basically, I feel like everyone has to have like one awful spirit flight that makes them never fly spirit again and this is mine. Although my flight home is supposed to be spirit, which I'm also dealing with at this time and is part of the reason that I'm like making a claim. So this is my spirit story from hell. Oliver was with me while I'm traveling. I did research before specifically about spirit. Went to their policy, literally nothing about paying to have him on board, okay? This is my first time traveling with a pet. Like, I didn't know what's normal for there to be a pet fee. I get to the airport and go right up to the front desk and I'm like, is there anything, the spirit front desk, is there anything specific I special I have to do for him? Like, I have him in the right size carrier to go under the seat in front of me. Like, I did my research, but I just want to make sure because I am an anxious person and I like to figure things out before I would have to deal with them in a way that I don't like. This didn't happen. He said, you're all set. There's nothing you have to do. I'm like, perfect. Time to board. I have my carrier on my shoulder, my carry-on next to me that I had to pay for as well. Thank you, spirit, for that. Scan my boarding pass. Nothing is said to me. I have a dog carrier at my side and this lady scans my thing and doesn't say anything. Walk onto the plane and then two flight attendants are standing at the front that greet you. And they're like, oh my gosh, like so cute. Like, is that a dog or cat in there? I'm like, he's a dog. He's just really, really small. Look at this guy. He's tiny. No one even knew he was on this damn plane. They don't say anything to me either, but they do go, which row are you sitting in? And I'm like, the fuck? And I just told them, but I just figured maybe like they have to tell people around me that there's going to be a dog, like just in case there's allergies. I don't know. We're about to take off and two spirit employees that I have not seen yet come sprinting down the aisle at me. And they're like, did you pay for that thing? Did you pay for that dog to be on this flight? And I was like, no, because the research that I did, it said spirit has a one plus one carry on policy and your dog will be a part of the one plus one. But I'm like, okay, what the fuck does that mean? So then I Google it and it says spirit has a one plus one policy, which means you get one personal item and one carry on. Obvious, oh, with fees, one carry on with fees. Which of course, by the way, of course it's going to be with the fees. Obviously, since Oliver's going under my seat where my personal item normally goes, I would assume he's my personal item going where my personal item would be. And not only are you, what, what are you charging me for? Because you're already taking away the one other place beside a carry-on I could pack anything via him. So now you're forcing me to buy a carry-on, which is $110. So I'm already paying more money just because I'm bringing him. And then you're gonna charge me a pet fee on top of that? I'm like, no, like what was it supposed to be? And he's like, it's $125 for him to fly. I was like, both ways? So when he says it's $125, I have like a, that's so raven like zoom flashback to a conversation i was having with my friend my roommate because literally for the third time maybe i don't know how many times i say it in this video i am i have this thing called anxiety and so i a week up until the point the point where i'm getting on this plane i'm talking to people i'm talking to my friends I don't know like what the deal is. Like I'm nervous that something is gonna happen on the flight, like with Oliver. So I'm talking with one of my friends and I tell her that I had been looking in the spirit app and I see traveling with pet, $125. This is actually like one of the main reasons that I'm going out to people beforehand and being like, is there anything special I'm supposed to do for this dog? Because, because of everything that I just explained about like what I'm losing and the expenses I'm taking on just for having something replace my personal item. When I see this 125 fee and I talk with my friend about it, I was like, there's no way this is for like, him right this has to be for like a dog that's taking up space and like is is replacing like a seat or something there was no part of my brain that thought logically there is any way oliver going under my seat was going to be costing more money and, and if you travel with dogs normally you might be like you sound like a fucking idiot this is my first time traveling with oliver ever i guess it's normal i guess it's a thing that people just pay this extra money i don't understand why i still have i still cannot wrap my head around why you would need to spend more money i don't under i can someone tell me what what the hell i could possibly be paying for when i pay them 125 dollars to have my dog on the plane i don't Anyways, here's how that went. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm on the flight. Everyone has boarded and now we're like, we were ready to go until these people like ran on. So now everyone on the plane is like, what's this bitch doing? What's the hold up? So I'm like, okay, give him my card. He runs off the plane, goes and like charges me, whatever. So then that's $125. That's how my flight starts. I'm like, I would like to jump 
out of this plane once it starts moving, but I won't. Oh, by the way, I'm holding him this whole time, but this is happening, okay? And I had read online beforehand that like he should be in his carrier the whole time, but he was freaking out. He gets anxious traveling specifically. And so I was like, I'm gonna just take him out. And if they tell me to put him away, then I'll just put him away. No one tells me, not one person is like, put that thing away. He was just like wrapped up in my black sweatshirt on my lap. This is how small he is on my lap. Let me just show you. This is smaller than my sweatshirt crumpled up in my lap alone. Okay. There's one woman next to me and her husband was next to her and she's like, oh honey, like there's a dog next to us. They were the sweetest people I've ever met in my life. I wish them nothing but happiness on their vacation. And then her husband goes, oh, where is he? Is he under there? She's like, no, he's, he's like right next to me. And he was like, oh wow, that thing, like he's tiny. I was like, I know. He's on my lap during takeoff, during the duration of the flight and no one says a damn thing to me. And I'm like, wow, like, you know, Sure, I had to pay $125 and the people next to me are like making jokes the whole time. Like, he costs more than you for this flight. I'm like, fucking tell me about it. The time comes to land. One flight attendant walks by and she's like, you need to put your dog like away. I'm like, okay. I'm like moving stuff around, whatever. I need to unzip the thing. She walks by me again 30 seconds later. He needs to go away. I go, I heard you. It's been 25 seconds. So then she like walks away again. I put him underneath. Another flight attendant walks by. One of the ones at first that was like, oh, he's such a that cat or dog. You're fake. You knew what you were doing. You were getting ready to tattle on me when you asked that question. She's like, he needs to be fully in his carrier. I looked down all over her head and managed to poke his head out. I'm like this fucking guy. So then I was like, okay. So then I'm like having to move the whole thing and like pick up the bottom and like zip it. She's standing, hovering over me, staring at me. I'm like, five more minutes go by. The pilot has now announced that it's time for everyone to be seated for landing. Oliver is, I've never seen him breathe that fast in my entire life. Like he's panting, he's shaking, like fully vibrating, digging, trying to get out of this thing. He's freaking the f out. Mind you, he's like on stuff to be calming him down and he's still freaking out and like hyperventilating and stuff. And I, once again, I do have anxiety. So in my head, he's about to die. He's about to die. And I'm like, okay, I can deal with these flight attendants being mad at me. I'd rather him not have a heart attack and no longer be with us when we land. So I take him out. This was a federal offense, according to the flight attendants, because they somehow, even though everyone's supposed to be seated for landing, sprint back over to me like a minute later and they're like, he has to go underneath. Okay, I know this is the one thing. I know I should not have taken him out. How do I say this? In I know I shouldn't have taken him out in like a rule sense. In a legal sense. In a rules of the... I was gonna say rules of the road, but I guess rules of the sky way. You'll see, they end up telling me like why I had to keep him under. I think I just said this, but I want to reiterate it again. I didn't give a f if the flight attendants were annoyed with me. Mind you, I didn't even think I was gonna see them again because it's time for everyone to be buckled in and seated. And the people next to me didn't care. They were like talking to me the whole time about how like they couldn't believe they were giving me so much shit about Oliver. They were honestly kind of hyping me up. I don't even know if they weren't there. I don't know if I would have taken him out again. Honestly, I, they were like hyping me up. They were like, what are they going to do? Kick you out? Airplane humor. I can't get kicked out. I want to reiterate. I know it was the quote unquote wrong thing to do to take him out. And I will take accountability for that. I was literally genuinely just scared shitless. And I don't know how to like explain how anxiety works, but anxiety is like, you need to have a solution right now for this problem. You need to solve this problem right now. I don't know how to explain it. And you can easily be like, like, this is all your fault. But like at the end of the day, I don't think I deserve to be treated the way that I was. And I think that they did a lot of things wrong when it came to like my situation, which is why I have this rant in this video. So if you disagree, hey, DSDF, you know what I mean? But it was just a shitty situation, honestly. And I didn't deserve, I don't think, to be treated so poorly for Something that in hindsight, like really wasn't a big deal. These flight attendants truly, I think just, I'll say this, the first one who came up to me and said like, he's really got to go underneath in my quote unquote final warning, which I'll get into. She was like, I'm a dog lover. Like I totally get it. I actually began explaining myself to her, which I'm about to get into. So then I started explaining to them. I was like, he was underneath just now for five minutes. Totally get it that he's supposed to be underneath. I'm worried for his like, safety in a different way than you at this point and i don't know what to do the flight attendant that saw his head poke out decides to be nosy and comes running down the aisle now that this woman's talking to me again and she's like this is your third warning and you are no longer allowed to travel with spirit with oliver i was like what there was not a single warning of this before the time that she said you're not allowed to travel with us anymore my flight home is with you guys what do you mean? And then I explained to her as well. I was like, so, first of all, sorry I took him out again, but 
again, the first time he took himself out, but whatever. He was just hyperventilating and like shaking violently and I got scared for his health. That's why I took him out. I was like, is there any way like he can go up with you or something? <laughs> like I literally asked her, I was like, I know you're pissed at me, but like, is there any way that he can go up with you? Because I think maybe being crammed underneath the seat is what's like, causing him to freak out. She's like, no, like we don't have any things up there, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, okay, well, can this just be my third warning? And I guess I'll just have an anxiety attack. She's like, I already have to file it. So I already filed the report. Cool, thank you for the warning. Um, Mind you, she tried telling me that like, I can't hold him up here because in my head, first of all, he's more secure right here being calm and in my arms than he is under my seat having a fucking panic attack. She tried to say that if we hit the ground too hard and he flies up in the air, then like, he's not secure. And I'm like, this seven pound dog that I'm this holding- can't happen. What? That can't happen. What? I'm a pilot uh -huh. um, and I have done so many landings where I balance a little bit because I'm new and I don't have my license yet and I kind of suck at landings. Yeah. And not one time, there's shit in the plane. Books in the back, there's my bag, there's my instructor's bag. Not one time, we've done stalls where you literally dive in the air nothing has moved. Mm -hmm. So the fact that she's saying that as a flight attendant that that could happen is actually insane. Lexi, what was your experience being someone that's looking on from not being in like my seat? What's what's everyone like looking like around you? Everyone was shaking their heads and being like, this is fucking ridiculous. I'm gonna guess not one person besides the woman sitting next to me and the flight attendants even knew that he was on the plane. Like yeah. he made, he was sleeping no, the entire time. I'm like sitting watching my show and he's sleeping right here. Like he didn't bother a single person. Everyone's just shaking their heads being like, is this for real? Like sh that she's getting like bitched out about this. Is that a thing to say? Bitched out? Yeah. yeah. That she's getting bitched out about this because she tried saying I could sue them if something happened to him. First of all, I don't even know how to do that. Second of all, why would I sue you because I'm holding my dog? Anyways, then I go up to her at the end of the flight after like we're deboarding, which by the way, left my Beats headphones, $360 headphones on the flight, as well as my sleeping mask. So now I have to figure that out as well. Now I'm crying too, by the way, because for a third time, I have anxiety in my head. My entire vacation, I'm now gonna have to be figuring out my flight home because I'm no longer allowed to travel with Spirit. And also I graduated from college two years ago, have thousands of dollars in debt, and I'm still like trying to pay that off. So I'm not spending my money like crazy. I also live in Boston, so rent's super high. Like I just like don't need to be stressed about money. And now I'm thinking about how stressed I'm gonna be about money too, because just lost $125 have to buy a new flight, don't know if I'm gonna be able to be reimbursed for this flight that I'm now gonna be canceling because I'm not allowed to travel with Spirit anymore. I'm like sobbing, trying to talk to this woman and I'm like trying to explain to her again why I was taking him out and can you please not file this report that says that I can't fly with Spirit with him anymore because I'm now at my destination, not home. Can't just leave him here. And she's like, I can't describe how like cold and heartless her eyes were. I wouldn't put this lightly. Like I, I would genuinely call her a cold person. I don't know what she's been through, but she's miserable. The one who came out to me afterwards, like she genuinely couldn't give two fucks about how scared I was. Meanwhile, the first lady genuinely was like trying to talk to me. If the people next to me were like, put your damn dog away, I would have like, I don't know. Just a shit situation guys, just absolutely shit. And I just want to say five of the rules I shouldn't have taken him out. And if I had known the repercussions, I absolutely would not have taken him out. And I would have just probably started crying. <laughs> well, I cried it either way, actually. Um, but I would have just had my own anxiety attack while Oliver had his down below. But just wanted to say, like, I can I understand, but I still don't think it was I still don't think I was treated in a kind, I don't want to say customer service -y way, but like kind of that like i just felt like i was treated like poor shit instead of like a person who was really scared if that makes sense so just staring at me i'm like sobbing that's making me more sad and upset sobbing more being like can you please not can you please not can you just please not actually so yeah that's what i'm dealing with and that's what i'm dealing with